Hey guys, Mitko here from DN Models. This video comes as an answer to the numerous requests for review of a pistol grip Chinese knockoff airbrush that many of the viewers here requested. I chose a no brand no name pistol grip airbrush but have in mind that no matter what engraving says they are pretty much all the same quality. I chose an option featuring 3 color cups and 0.3 mm needle nozzle combo with a cup that goes on top of the airbrush. Side feeders are a bit more complex and I was pretty sure that Chinese knockoffs will create some problems in that area, if not immediately, very soon afterwards. This airbrush costs something like $27-$28 dollars delivered, that is US. Mine came in a box different than advertised but after testing it, it appeared that it would serve the purpose well enough. Good looking set for starters, but as we all know, it doesn't come to that in the end. Instructions are represented by a single sheet only, pretty much the same as with Spirit Air that we reviewed. Everything is minimalistic and made only to save some money to the seller. Not that the sheet is bad, but information is not abundant. There is some guidelines included, so supposedly you should know enough before you start. Which I am pretty sure all of you do. Now, the interesting part of the instruction sheet are the part description, list and the scheme. Both are clear and nicely done, but this is a pistol grip airbrush, so exchanging some of its elements will be tricky. Good to know what's inside though. Each and every of these elements is cheap. For example, the needle can be bought for $3-$4, O-ring sets for $2, nozzle for $5. You get my drift. The most valuable thing in this airbrush is the handle. I haven't fitted that onto a Iwata airbrush, but if it is an original Iwata, the handle itself can cost as much as this whole airbrush does in case you go Iwata revolution way. So, even if the airbrush is complete junk here, why not get one solely for the plastic grip and keep the rest for emergencies, right? Well, maybe not. I weighed all my airbrushes to get an idea how the manufacturer approached the tool. This airbrush is sturdy and heavy enough, which is a good thing, especially considering the pistol grip shape. 155 grams is pretty standard for the tools. So far so good from Chinese copycats. Then the three paint cups that we get as well. Each one weights differently but overall the airbrush is within the limits of what I have tested and used before in terms of pistol grip tools. Of course one have to consider that the bigger the paint cup the more paint will be inside thus more weight will be added. So in case you plan to exchange your color cups often, be sure that you are adjusted to the new weight so to keep a perfect balance. The three paint cups are nicely done but they have some problems. The coating from the outside is looking nice but it is not sturdy. How I know that on a new airbrush? Well this isn't my first Chinese knockoff. Inside coating looks good but that is a mirage. This has nothing to do with the real deal coating, only imitates it to some extent. The caps does not fit perfectly either, but only two out of three cups feature such caps, so this is not a big deal. We have a wrench, but again this isn't that important in this case. If you are interested in this assembling though, it is there for you to have fun with. Two types of hose connectors are there, the standard one and the one that only Badger and Pashi use nowadays. The smaller one I mean. Nobody besides those two companies, at least not to my knowledge, use that size anymore. Nice to have those here since they cost a dollar or two each which adds to the deal. Other than that the airbrush is made from nice material with decent craftsmanship. Both might be cheap but when you get it out of the box it looks nice enough, especially for the price. The body of the airbrush where you should put the color cup is a color cup by itself. It has an o-ring to seal the additional cup but if you work on small surfaces this will be enough to get few drops of paint. 
good idea, especially considering the fact that there are airbrushes that feature smaller paint cups from the factory as a sole option. So in total, for paint cups, options here. It gets better and better, right? Wrong. Wait for the testing. Pretty standard pressure of 1.1 bars here or 16 psi. Make paint since those paints are demanding and famous for quick drying needle tip. It doesn't start smoothly, nor you can get it to work consistently. There is a noise with the paint here and there and constant disruptions. No pressure, clean tip. Yes, I know this paint is demanding, but I know my way around it. The day isn't dry, so this isn't the issue here. Spirit Air was capable of finer lines and more easily. Here I don't think that is doable. First because of the lousy control of the mix due to the lousy trigger. Then because of the combination of not so good craftsmanship poor needle and nozzle quality and imperfect paint which result in exactly this. Little bit more pressure, clean tip, a drop of diluter and not much is changed. At moments it looks fine, especially at that distance, but I'll show you further in the video up close and personal what the pattern looked like. If you paint them at 30 second scale, which costs $150 or more, you will want to smash that airbrush with a hammer at this point. But let's see how it will go further. Inconsistent, lack of proper control despite the trigger action and noisy spray. By noisy I mean that the pattern isn't clear but there are many small sprinkles around the line which should be fine and clean. But it isn't. No matter how many times I change the pressure or dilution I get the same results. If I paint thick lines with the sole goal of coverage, it should work fine, but actually it doesn't. If you look closely at the right hand side and down, you will see that even though it looks thick, at the end you have transparency of the coverage. This is due to the paint thickness and the poor spray pattern that the airbrush does. One excludes the other. Even if you can at some point master it and make some fine lines, they are with brakes. Whenever it decides, the paint just taps for a moment. There is a way around that and I will get to that shortly. But it doesn't look good so far and I don't think it will. So what's wrong with that airbrush? Well most annoying is the noise around the patterns. You will get around that with lacquer paints maybe, but this isn't enough. 
thinner acrylic should do the job too, but in the end you won't get proper coverage. The second worst thing is the sputtering or breaks in the lines. If you polish the needle and fine tune the airbrush, loop the trigger and use something different than Iwata loop, maybe something like Badger or other loop solution which is thinner and long lasting, this might be avoided but only in that case and this isn't guaranteed. You can of course get 5 needles for $20 and exchange them or get same amount of nozzles of course but is that worth the effort? I doubt it. Compared to the other Chinese knockoff, the Spirit Air that I reviewed, this one loses on all fronts. And this is a pistol grip airbrush which should be easier to be handled. However, it isn't. I trust that it is a waste of money and if you insist on Go Pistol Grip, go Sparmax, Grex or Iwata. I prefer Sparmax because they offer some quality at lower price and their support team is awesome. So is this airbrush worth $27? Yes, but not more than that. If you want to experiment or have a spare brush, this might do it but it isn't a tool that you can use for serious modeling. Even if you tune it up, it might fail you at the worst possible time. And with your best model eventually. Thank you for watching, I hope that you enjoyed this review. Stay tuned for more and don't forget to subscribe, comment and share. I will see you in the next one.